Patrick Tambay was a former French driver who raced in 100-plus Formula One Grand Prix. He won two races, 11 podiums, and two Constructors' Cups with Ferrari. In today's video, we'll be talking about the tragic death of Patrick Tambay, who passed away at the age of 73 after battling Parkinson's disease. We'll also talk about his legendary life story, so make sure to stay until the end to learn all about it. First up, Patrick Tambay's tragic death. Patrick Tambay, a former Ferrari driver, died after a difficult struggle with Parkinson's disease. He had long battled Parkinson's. His family confirmed his death on the 4th of December 2022 at the age of 73, and his loved ones were by his bedside in his last moments. Tambay had a slowdown recently due to his illness, but in the moments when he was feeling better, he'd visit his pals for coffee close to Lacanne's town hall. There he'd talk about his days at Ferrari, considering that was the highlight of his career. Tambay's passing has sparked a massive wave of sadness among everyone in Formula One. No doubt he was a gifted racer who believed belonged to the legendary French racing group that rose from the youth leagues to the top. Next up, Patrick's career. He simply had it all. Perfect manners, a great sense of humor, amazing driving skills, and to top it all off, he was darn good looking. The French driver raced in four 24 hours of Le Mans races and nine Formula One seasons. Tambay is one of only two drivers who have won multiple Can-Am championships, together with former F1 driver Bruce McLaren. Patrick Daniel Tambay was one of the most genuinely attractive and famous F1 drivers on the scene in the early 1980s. He was born in Paris on June 25, 1949. He received his education both in France and the United States before deciding to pursue motorsport in 1972. A few of you might be interested to know that he skied as a teenager on both land and in the water. He won the prestigious Volant Elf Award while attending Mike Knight's Winfield Racing School at Paul Ricard. Due to Elf support, he entered the French and European Formula Renault Championships. The next year, he finished the season with the same number of points as Rene Arnault, but lost out on first place because Arnault had more outright wins. He came very close to winning the European Championship. També moved to European Formula 2 in 1974, competing for the Ecurie Elf in the Alpine A367, powered by a BMW engine, placing ninth in the rankings. Now, we'll look back on his successful and diverse motor racing career. Moving on, the Formula 1 career of Tambay. Tambay moved to Formula 1 in 1977, following two spectacular back-to-back top three finishes in the Drivers' Championship in European Formula 2. Three times during the season, he scored points while driving for the two teams, Team Surtees and Theodore Racing Hong Kong. Tambe received a promotion the following year to McLaren. In 1978 and 79, he competed for McLaren. In his debut season with the team, he raced with James Hunt, the defending F1 world champion. Hunt's last full season in the sport and with McLaren would both be this one. After Tambe passed away, McLaren paid tribute to him on their social media platforms. All of us at McLaren are saddened by the news that Patrick També has passed away. He was a talented driver, racing for McLaren from 1978 to 1979. Our thoughts are with his family and friends. Indeed, we lost a gem. Up next, També's triumph in Canadian American Challenge Cup. També made his Formula One debut in 1977, although he also participated in his first Can-Am race with the Carlet Haas Racing Squad. In the same season, the French driver also started in two European Formula Two races, one of which he won from pole position. His first experience with championship success came during this season, when he was named Can-Am champion. També focused completely on Can-Am in 1980, after a terrible year with McLaren in F1 in 1979, where he once again won the title. Well, surely it seems Tambay wasn't done with F1 yet. Now for his comeback to F1. També returned to the pinnacle of motorsport for the 1981 season, even though he had only amassed 13 points in his three prior seasons. The Frenchman competed in races for the Equipe Talbo Guitanes and Theodore Racing teams throughout the year, earning one championship point. When Tambay's Formula One career was thought to be gone, a tragedy on the track inspired him to return to the competition. What's more, he then joined Ferrari at the 1982 Belgian Grand Prix. Joke and Mass and Giles Villeneuve were involved in a worse accident after the Canadian's flying lap. Due to the terrible accident, Villeneuve passed away from his wounds, and Ferrari did not have a driver for the following three races. Not to mention the Canadian driver Giles is still held in high respect in motorsport. També, meanwhile, had absolutely no luck in the previous eight races. He wasn't given a seat in F1 in 1982, but with the passing of his close friend Giles, things changed. També offered Villeneuve's family to stay at his house in Switzerland after Giles' passing. Likewise, Villeneuve's Scuderia seat was offered to him. He then joined Ferrari for championship round nine at Zandvoort. At the Dutch Grand Prix, Villeneuve's pal took the place of the Canadian driver. També's two seasons at Ferrari would prove to be his most successful in the sport. 
the French driver won two Grand Prix races, finished on eight podiums, and scored 14 points. He helped Ferrari win back-to-back -back Constructors World Championships during his two seasons with the Scudiera. Now that's what we call a comeback. Let's talk about how Ferrari was fortunate to have him, putting a sad Scudiera Ferrari back on the track with the passing of Giles Villeneuve and the terrible accident of Didier Peroni, which happened a few weeks later during the trials for the German Grand Prix. It was how Tambe had, above all, won the hearts of the Tifosi. He saved Ferrari from disaster by winning the same Grand Prix. He'll give this credit to Vilna, Peroni, and Enzo Ferrari in gratitude for their faith in him. His second victory the following year in Imola, which is near the Maranello headquarters of Ferrari, had undoubtedly confirmed his position among Italian fans. Following up, the final years of F1 competition. Before retiring, he continued to race three more years after leaving Ferrari, before ending his final season with Team Haas USA in 1986. He competed for Equipe Renault Elf in the years 1984 and 1985. Patrick loved riding in several series at the same time while he was at the top of his game. The Frenchman had already participated in the 24 Hours of Le Mans three times, for three years in a row, before ending his F1 career. He didn't really achieve on each of the three occasions, but his fourth place performance in the 1989 tournament, though, was one of his best. Let's learn about his later years. After retiring, Patrick worked as a television analyst for French television and was the deputy mayor of Le Canet Cannes. He also assisted his son, Adrian Tambay, in his DTM racing career. The godfather of Giles Villeneuve's son, Jacques Villeneuve, was likewise named as the two-time race winner. The younger Canadian went on to win the Formula One World Championship in 1997. He had two marriages. His son Adrian was born in 1991. Following his father's racing career, he won the 2021 championship. But as we know, he struggled with Parkinson's illness in his final years. As ever, he fought it with great bravery and grace. Also, Stefano Domenicali, the president of Formula One, paid tribute and said that he's deeply saddened to know about Patrick Tambay's passing. He also shared that Tambay spent his entire life being a fantastic talent and Formula One ambassador. Finishing up, farewell legend. Many of the legendary drivers from that era of racing have passed away in recent years, but their legacy will live on in the hearts of their devoted fans. Now the news of Patrick Tambay's passing has left F1 fans extremely startled. Patrick Tambay is remembered for his spectacular triumph at the 1982 German Grand Prix, and a year later, at the GP of San Marino, he achieved yet another outstanding performance. The Frenchman, who's considered one of the most brilliant drivers to have emerged in the 80s, also had five pole positions victories and 11 podium finishes throughout his career. After learning of the driver's passing, teams like McLaren, Ferrari, and others placed tributes to him online and offline. Folks on Twitter expressed their love for him and paid respect to his legendary racing years, embracing his exceptional talent and skill. In their tweets, his fans praised his incredible successes. We will all miss you dearly, Patrick, and at this difficult time, our hearts go out to his family and loved ones. And with that, that's a wrap for today's video. What was your favorite thing about the legendary driver? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon below to stay updated on our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.